بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آف نائن سی السلام علیکم آئی ایم یور ٹیچر محمد الیاس اینڈ آئی ویلکم یو دس فرسٹ سیریز آف ای لرننگ دس از یور فرسٹ لیکچر اینڈ دس لیکچر از بیسڈ آن یور چیپٹر نمبر فرام یور بک سیون اینڈ دا ٹاپک نمبر سیون فرام سی آئی سلیبس اینڈ دا ٹاپک از دا ٹرانسپورٹ ان ہیومنس and you also you, you can also say the transport in the mammals dear students today's objectives are as follows you and me will try to understand the circulatory system as a system of tubes pumps and valves it means that our circulatory system is comprises of the three main things tubes pumps and the valves to ensure one way flow of the blood The second objective for today's session is to understand the flow of blood from heart to lungs and from body to towards the heart and in this how a double circulation is done by heart. And the third objective for today's session will be the main blood vessels that carry blood to and from heart lungs liver and kidney the fourth and very important objective for today's session is to understand the structure and the function of the heart so students are you ready now we are moving towards our first slide and this slide is comprising of the human circulatory system a system of tubes pump and the valves from this diagram you can see that three things are very important one is the heart second the tubes or vessels which carry the blood in our body and third the valves as shown in the structure of heart dear students the human circulatory system is made up of a muscular pump the heart which pumps blood around a network of blood vessels arteries capillaries and veins the heart and some of the blood vessels contain structures called valves these valves helps to maintain a one way flow of blood around the body the major role of the circulatory system is to pump blood to the lungs where it takes up oxygen and then to distribute the oxygenated blood to the other parts of the body where the oxygen is needed and for this purpose a double circulatory system is present in our body in human and all other mammals this is achieved by the double circulation and a key feature of the double circulation is that the heart is not one pump but the two the right side of the heart pumps blood to the lungs here the blood is ox is uh, is to be oxygenated for uh, the left side of the heart pumps the oxygenated blood around the body where it unload oxygen to the respiring respiring tissues these two parts of the double circulations are called pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation in pulmonary circulation or deoxygenated blood leaves the right side of the heart and pass through the pulmonary arteries to the lungs in the lungs the blood is oxygenated before returning through the pulmonary veins to the left side of the heart in systemic circulation the oxygenated blood leaves the left side of the heart and passes through the aorta to all other parts of the body it unloads the oxygen and the deoxygenated blood before returning through the veins to the heart to the right side of the heart dear students the double circulation has another important function it allows the different blood pressures to maintain 
the maintain the pressure in the systemic and pulmonary circulations the pressure in the systemic circulation is much higher than in the pulmonary circulations now we are moving towards the different types of the blood vessels present in the human and mammals body these blood vessels are of three types from this picture you can see the arteries capillaries and veins arteries carry blood away from the heart and it take it to all other organs of the body veins carry blood away from all other organs of the body and return it to the heart and capillaries carry blood through all the organs of the body linking arteries and veins and it also helps in the exchange of materials between the blood and the tissues the largest artery in our body is aorta which carries oxygenated blood from the left side of the heart and it divides to produce smaller arteries supplying the nutrients to different organs these arteries are often named after the organs they supply the different nutrients and the oxygen likewise hepatic artery which takes blood to the liver and the other arteries which supplies like the renal artery which supplies the blood to the kidneys now come to the veins the biggest vein in the body is vena cava in fact there are two vena cavas one is the carrying the blood from the head and neck region that is called superior vena cava while the inferior vena cava carries the blood from the lower parts of the body dear students here is a flow chart to understand how blood is supplying is supplied by the heart to different parts of the body the heart is supplying the blood to the head and arms region shoulder and then the hepatic artery to the liver renal artery to the kidney and then to the lower parts of the body likewise the veins are collecting back the heart from all these organs superior vena cava from head and <coughs> arm region hepatic vein from liver and stomach region renal vein from the kidneys and in this way all these are combined together to form the inferior vena cava and give back the blood to the heart for purification process so dear students we have learned to the uh, right now the circulatory system comprises of the heart the the uh, vessels and the walls and there is a double circulation done by the heart one is towards the lungs second towards the body and from uh, the lung side called the pulmonary circulation and the circulation which supplies blood to the heart is called the systemic circulation after understanding all these things now we are moving towards a very important function and structure of the heart dear student the heart is a pump it is a two type uh, two pumps it is having the heart is made up of special kind of muscles called the cardiac muscles it pumps blood around the body so that the blood can supply the tissues with oxygen nutrients and other substances and it can remove waste materials such as carbon dioxide the bulk of the heart muscle is made up of two lower chambers called the ventricles the right ventricle and the left ventricle which pump blood out of the heart through the arteries and there are two upper chambers called atria the right atrium and the left atrium which are smaller and less muscular than the ventricles 
These chambers receive the blood through veins. On the surface of the ventricles are small blood vessels called coronary arteries. These small arteries come off from the aorta and supply the heart muscles with the blood. The heart gets all its nutrients and oxygen through the coronary, coronary arteries. The left and right side of the heart are separated by a muscle called septum. Between atri and ventricles are atrioventricle walls which prevent backflow of blood into the atria when the ventricles are contracting. The left atrioventricle walls has two flaps of tissues which gives its name bicuspid valve and this is also called vitral wall while the right atrioventricle wall has three flaps hence it is called the tricuspid wall the wall flaps are attached to the muscles of the wall of the ventricle by tough string called tendons which prevent the wall flaps from flipping backwards into the atria when the ventricles contract. The arteries carry blood away from the heart also have walls called semilunar walls. The word semilunar means half full moon and named right from their shape. Dear students, we have discussed the walls which are present in the heart. These walls are specifically designed to prevent the backflow of the blood, which is in this case would happen when the ventricles relax. The atrioventricular and semilunar walls ensure that there is one way flow of blood through the heart during the heart cycle. Now you can notice the difference between the thickness of muscular walls of the left ventricle as compared to the right ventricle. The left ventricle is much thicker. This is related to their function. The right ventricle only pumps blood to the lungs while the right ventricle pumps blood to all other parts of the body. So moving towards another diagram which shows how the blood is received by the heart and where it is sent and from how it is received from that part of the body. Now we are going to focus on the right atrium. The blood from the body is received by the vena cava and then it is transferred to the right atrium 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 the right atrium contracts and pushes the blood through the walls called the tricuspid wall into the right ventricle this right ventricle pushes the blood towards the lungs through pulmonary artery after purification the lungs uh, return the blood back to the heart and this blood is received by the left atrium and this left atrium contracts and pushes the blood through the bicuspid walls into the vent ventricle, the left ventricle. The left ventricle pushes the blood towards the body through the aorta. This aorta divides and supplies the blood to different parts of the body. In this how the blood is pushed, is pumped to different parts of the body by the heart. Dear students, this is uh, heart structure and the functions of the heart. Now I am going to assign you the homework which is from your chapter number 7, the past papers questions, question number 1 and the page number is 175. You have to do this homework on your notebooks and send to the your group. Thank you very much for being with me. Allah Hafiz, stay home, stay safe.